Okay, so uh, it's the uh, community call uh, on Tuesday the 17th of September. Blimey. Uh, 2024, I was just thinking, doesn't time fly? It only feels like March to me in 2024, but uh, anyway, there we go. It's coming to the end of the year. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the community call. A uh, very select group will uh, get on to uh, that later on, I'm sure. Um, and I'm just going to go down the announcements and work priorities and agenda items and things like that that we've got. So uh, there is one announcement uh, from from me or the wider PyScript team, and that is a new release was made on Friday the 13th. In the afternoon of Friday the 13th, Euro time, uh, and that's 2024.9.1. Uh, so update your references if you can. Um, in a stunning turn of events, uh, Andrea and I were a little bit too hubris-filled and blasé, where we were like, of course, we've automated all the things. Releasing on the afternoon of Friday the 13th isn't going to be a problem. But then, of course, something did happen and we had to update some of our GitHub actions. So we have done that. And Friday the 13th actually did have a little glitch that you won't have seen. But it makes me smile anyway that uh, we get we, we, we get bitten in the bum by these sorts of things. Andrea! Yes. Um, if I can add anything, uh, we decided to release because... Uh, there has been a week and a half of um, issues, random issues with um, PyScript project uh, with MicroPython and some some special of events or things, and it wasn't on us. So we wanted to be sure that once Chromium project solved the issues, yeah. we could say, okay, we have released. So now you can test new things without worrying about crashing things because that has been solved. Yeah. There are tests, and so. Uh, the project is back to stable. Um, it wasn't our fault yet. I'm super happy that we managed to <laughs> that we managed to provide examples and they managed to fix in a sort of timely manner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, right now Chromium is um, 129, um, and also 128 has been back, the fix has been back, back ported, yeah. and um, and so everything is fine and. Uh, so update the, your browsers, the, folks. Is the yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if you if you ever seen if you ever see uh, oh snap out of any of our examples, please be sure you are you, you're running most patched Chrome you have or uh, the, the the latest that would be ideal. Unfortunately, there is um uh, an edge case we don't we don't get to control, which is the um, Microsoft Edge release cycle. And we don't know when Edge will eventually patch it, but right now, um, it, the next the next release of Edge, whatever it is, uh, it should just work out of the box because Chromium works out of the box again. <laughs> and hopefully, because they had the test and everything else, uh, hopefully uh, there won't be any there won't uh, be regressions uh, or anything. Yeah, will yeah, yeah, regressions exactly. in the future exactly. around this issue. Cool, awesome. So that's a bonus announcement, which is Chrome and Chromium. Uh, more to the point, yeah. is fixed. And everything else is kind of slotting back into place. So cool. So upcoming work priorities. So Andrea and I just very, very briefly explain what we're going to be working on over the coming week. And so for me, uh, I'm just going to be continuing with the refactoring of the PyScript test suite. And I'll be hopefully showing a little bit of the progress that I'll be making later on as one of the agenda items. Uh, so very briefly, uh, you know, like in less than a minute, what are you going to be working on this week, Andrea? So yeah, I moved that into agenda item ah. because uh, I don't know about priorities, but the, 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 there are a couple of things that uh, are um, worrying me, and, uh, and maybe if we go through the agenda items, I will explain will, all of yeah. them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right now, the the only thing okay, okay, it, it wasn't a priority, but the only thing that just landed today um, in our repo um, is the config um, type. The config type, maybe, maybe I can move that yeah. uh, here in the upcoming word priorities because it just landed. Yeah. So config type gives you either the string mpy or the string pi, as easy as that. So it reflects, uh, it, it, even if you are in a main thread, worker thread, it doesn't matter. When you, from PyScript, import config, that config will have a field, which is the type. And so, you know, instead of doing the a lot of try catches around or, or stuff like that. You, you, you just know that if config is either pi or mpy, you can eventually 
provide your specific ad hoc utility for the environment. Um, this probably should have been there ages ago, but <laughs> we, we just realized that there are, as much as we would like to normalize it with our FFI and everything else, everything, uh, th 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 there are edge cases that cannot really be normalized because of lacking functionalities, either from Pyodide or from MicroPython. So uh, I hope this will be um, it's a useful flag, whenever, it? it's, whenever it's needed, it's going to be a helpful extra thing out of the config because the config is, provides all the details about how you configure the environment, if you did. Yeah. So it has files, fetches, and, uh, and, and a lot of other things, even the interpreter, if you specify a different interpreter. And now it has a type which reflects the script type that you use. So either Py or MPy. Yeah. That's so it. You're, that you're, you're the... In your, so the use case is you're in your Python code and you need a branch for C Python or MicroPython. And so what you do yeah. is if config type equals MPY, that branch will be for MicroPython. Else if config type equals PY, that will be for Pyodide. Um, so that's- It's an else, not an else if, because uh, no, we currently yeah, just, 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 support only, only Py and MPy, but it was a good hint in the future there might be something else. Yeah, who know. knows? Uh, Spy, for instance, who knows? Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to the gender items. I'll be very quick with my ones on these, although I need to share my screen. Uh, uh, so um, the usual, uh, um, please uh, go visit the Great Pythonic Bake Off and give us your opinions. Um, I need to actually get involved in that again. I've been busy, <laughs> uh, but I intend to get to that once the testing um work that i'm doing at the moment is is done so just mentioning that um the next item is uh, again me uh, a test suite update so what i am going to do is uh i'm going to share my screen so let me just do that share my screen uh -huh. um, and um i'm also just going to switch off oh no i'm not going to do that and then I want screens, and screen one, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. So you should see yourself yeah. infinitely. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so I'm going to move you folks over there. Um, so uh, so uh, where's my Visual Studio gone? You can see I've got so many. There we go. Okay. So this is PyScript, um, and I'm in the test directory, and I'm in the integration Python tests here. And what I've done is taken the old Python integration tests and moved them over into test when, test Py, and test document, which is the only ones that were really actually testing our Python code. Uh, the rest were kind of sanity checks or tests that tested that PyScript itself was working rather than the Python code in PyScript, if you see what I mean. But those aspects of PyScript are also tested in our JavaScript code. So it was kind of a duplicate. Or they were testing things like PyDide or the browser was working a particular way, which um, I, I don't think we should be testing that. We should trust that upstream projects are working properly. And so I've, I've um, you know... Uh, uh, you know, copied over all these tests and rewritten them in the right sort of a way. So there's rather a lot of tests for PyScript.web. Uh, but I've also started to uh, do um, tests for some of the various other aspects of our... Um, uh, uh, so, yeah, test, uh, test fetch, for instance. Other aspects of our API that didn't have tests. So I've been writing those as well. Um, and then if we actually look at what's the output, well, it looks like this. Uh, this is how long it takes to run. There you go. Uh, that's by default on MicroPython because that's nice to uh, work quickly with. Uh, this is it running on Pyodide. Um, of course, it's going to take a long time. Okay. And uh, what I would like to know is uh, why isn't it flushing print uh, out to standard it to here? I guess it's because we're on the main. We're blocking the main loop. Um, uh, I'll come on to. Um, uh, that in a moment um so you know instrumental music going okay so as you can see a different number of tests have been skipped that's because some tests only work with pyodide and not with micropython and so on and so forth but again it's exactly the same test suite but run using pyodide and this is taking about 20 seconds which is 
uh, the longest you've probably it's probably going to take. Um, and uh, also, I can also say things like uh, worker equals one. So this is MicroPython running in a the test running in a worker. Um, this is slower, uh, and you can see down at the bottom some of the uh, the DOM related uh, stuff that's uh, <laughs> that's being run by the test suite. Um, but in the end, uh, let me guess. Uh, yeah, here we go. There's some other stuff going on there to do with display. Uh, we've got one failure, uh, and uh, that's uh, and what actually happens at the end of a test run. Uh, a new element is created uh, with the ID of results into which is a JSON representation of what the tests were. Basically, uh, something that looks like uh, that will give us that sort of information. Um, and also, I could also, I guess, get this uh, sorry and uh, type equals pi. So this is now, of course, running uh, the test suite in Pyodide in a worker. Uh, it's going to take a while to get started up, but I'm, I'm trying to work out why print isn't um isn't producing the dots as i was expecting from the worker but anyway uh this is interesting because there are discrepancies between worker and main thread uh in in some of the code and I, i've spotted some problems so uh what i will do uh when i've actually built out the test suite is create some issues um uh and people can run this branch and and and, and get them uh and we can so squash those if bones. i can if I can comment on that, yeah. First of all, if, if the code is the same, it's very weird that you don't see print because we don't do anything with the actual logging or the terminal, so it should it should just work. But I will be happy to have a look and and, and find out well, why well, here's is the that. Thing. Th this is all print coming from the worker. Yeah, but it's not in a loop. So the loop is testing stuff, and yeah. uh, if it's blocking somehow. And I understand yeah, why okay. that's happening. I, yeah, don't worry. I know what it was. Yeah, don't worry. And um, at the same time, it's it's super nice to see these as uh, uh, the progress, but I don't think we should look at tests. <laughs> so you just run the test and you, you want to have a nice outcome that says this broke, this this worked, and uh, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And also before when you say the DOM is appending uh, to, the, to the page, um, it wasn't visible from the video, so I'm not sure what's going on, but whatever JSON is printed out, we should probably parse it and present it in a better way when it run, when tests run in a browser. Yeah. But right now, yeah. Okay, so the, the same, the same test, yeah, okay. So here's the... I the thing is that at the end of tests, we want to have a report in CI or locally, whatever yeah. that is. And, um, can, can you and see the JSON now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I, can, yeah. I can see. So, so before so you say, right, we can we can say, yeah. you know, when when a new uh, element with the ID results is attached to the um, uh, to the DOM, in the the inner text of that is going to be the the JSON string that we can then parse to make sure that we know the uh, yeah. the tests have run and things. And that's basically the progress uh, uh, for it. So I'm just going to keep uh, keep uh, plugging down here. Making sure that we have tests for uh, where appropriate, because some of these can't or won't have tests. Uh, we we have at least enough tests to make sure that we're not adding regression and they work appropriately on, you know, uh, main and and worker and uh, pyodide and micropython. So so that's it. Let me just stop sharing my screen, um, and I'm going to move that back here so people can see that. So that's 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 what I'm doing so far, and I think I probably spend another day on that just to build out the test suite and write up the the problems that i've seen and fix a few things i've also been fixing some things in micro test which is what i've been using to run the test suite so things like that loop uh i will be able to uh easily fix that uh of course i've uh, uh yeah that just didn't uh, occur to me um so next on the agenda items is andrea um recruiting for participants in this meeting ideas please well, the item says it all. So it's about having more people involved instead of less. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if it's something something in this format that you don't like. But this meeting talks really about where we are, what we're doing, where we're going. And um, 
it's a bit underwhelming to, to, to see fewer participants um, over the time. Although Nicholas told me, but people are looking at the, <laughs> the yeah. recordings. So, oh, people are uh, definitely watching it. Um, yeah. It does no, also to so... point out uh, Anna Connor, Anna, I can't talk now. Anaconda colleagues who have been involved in PyScript.com, so not the open source thing, who have been turning up to this in the past uh, because of internal yeah, yeah. restructuring and things like that, they have a meeting right now, um, which means, which is why you, you know Fabio and Martin and and some of the others are not here is because they've they, they they've got this other kind of uh, internal meeting that that they have to be in yeah. because we're we're in different places. But at the same time, at the, we're a community project. Um, we're core developers uh, it would be nice if other people who um are interested uh, feel welcome so uh i don't know i mean part of me thinks this is just turning into kind of like a video podcast of me and you just talking yeah, about yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on that, that and, that, and, that, and, and that's not a bad thing either because if that's all people want to do is just go look at what 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 the core developers are doing then um then that's fine but uh and also we've got pie script fun which is where we get a lot more people turn up because people want to show us what they've been doing with PyScript. So it's a very different kind of vibe as well. Um, they want to have fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 good fun, PyScript fun. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what people want to do. Uh, but please let us know. Uh, in Discord, uh, let us know. Um, uh, what would make this a better meeting for you? Uh, what would make it a more inclusive meeting uh, for you? One where you feel you can turn up because I understand that by the nature of this meeting, it's usually deeply technical and if you don't know the innards of PyScript, it's probably going to go right over your head. So I don't know, maybe I'm thinking of off the top of my head, maybe one thing we could do is like a five minute deep dive into some technical aspect of PyScript that we could express. So people learn about, well, how does fetch work? Well, here's the source code. Let's have a look. This is how it wraps the JavaScript fetch API underneath or something like that. I don't know. Um, anyway, I don't know. What, what yeah. do you think, Andrea? So I think probably, so I, I, I'd love to hear ideas uh, from the community. One thing that I'm thinking about is that if we discuss specific issues or items, maybe, so we, we are very widely distributed team and, yeah. and, and all the people using our project are all over the, the world, right? So I, I'm not expecting everyone at this time to be able to to join. But at the same time, maybe if I'm saying, okay, I'm going to discuss about this issue, maybe at least in that case, if they know in advance what we're going to discuss, I'm not saying a week before, but at least in the morning. So I, I just say, okay, today I want to discuss this specific issue. Maybe at least the, 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 the people involved with that issue or interested in that issue yeah. might show up. That, that that could be something, you know? So, But at the same time, I, I can just say, okay, we discussed this issue. Whoever is interested as a yeah. as a video podcast, whoever is interested, hear the time where yeah. we discuss that issue. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to force people to join. It's just, yeah, 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 is yeah. that anything that will make it better for, 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 for people so that we, we can also share more knowledge, technical knowledge at the end of the day, we still need to provide better documentation. So yeah, quite, <laughs> yeah, quite. You, you, you make a very good point, though, which is I, I tend and I do this deliberately to um, point out where our uh, agenda document is yeah. between three to two hours ahead of when this meeting starts, because that's when the US is generally waking up. And yeah. uh, I wanted to make sure that folks in North America, you, you know, so that message is kind of um, is is visible um, yeah. to them. But um, yeah, uh, we we should we, we should think about this. The process around how do we get agenda items in and what we're going to talk about and who should turn up and things is is very important because yeah. we could invite people to come along to the meeting and so on and so forth. Yeah, at least the the people that are interested into in, in, that in that sort of specific thing. item yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. we create uh, also. Yeah. Yeah, we involve more people in, yeah, the, yeah. in the process. Yeah, well, for instance, it would have been good if we'd done that around the Chrome it, Chromium issues uh, two or three weeks ago, because then people would. Uh, that would have been just frustration shared. Oh well, yes, the, but at least they would know it's not it's not our fault. We're waiting on Chrome and uh, you know all of that sort of stuff. Okay, let put your thinking caps on, folks, and and let us know. We really do want to hear from you. And uh, you know, whilst it's 
lovely to talk to Andrea. And I really do mean that. Uh, and I talk to Andrea pretty much every day uh, in the morning, Euro time. Uh, we're either talking on our internal Slack or on Discord or we have a quick Zoom catch up or things like that. Um, it'd be nice to talk to other people as well. No disrespect intended towards Andrea, but you know what I mean? The more, the merrier. That's what we want. We're a friendly bunch of people. Come and join us. Uh, say hello and we will help as well. If you have a question, please just ask. We're very enthusiastic, both of us. I know I can speak for us both here. Both of us are very enthusiastic about wanting to help people engage with the code base and things like that. So um, there we go with that one. Um, next agenda item. Uh, okay, so this is Andrea. Another non-pinned example that suddenly... Failed. So this is a uh, K-means in panel uh, example. Yeah. I, I guess you're going to share yeah, your screen yeah. now, aren't you? Yes. Um, that's what they're going to do. Share. Uh, wait for it. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. So yeah, basically, um, we recently provided events while loading stuff and events are like loaded micro paper so i can run this example again and you you will see that we have a pi column or mpi column but with mpi it's almost pointless because it's, it's very fast so it, it, it's not really needed but for pyodite when we run a lot of dependencies so we want to provide all the events so this is pi column progress event that triggers all the things and then we we released it already and and then today there was a question how did you manage to do x on that merge request and it doesn't matter what the question was about the matter is i tried the example again and i got stuck here mm. um which was not not super uh cool because we have, once again, can't find a pure Python wheel for Tornado. It doesn't matter if it's Tornado. It can, it can be any, literally yeah. any dependency. Yeah. And I've recently updated this demo to, to be sure that we could run it. And I forgot at that time to pin dependencies. Uh... And I think we, 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 we did stress this already, but you want to be sure that a specific because we we provide a pin version of interpreters and PyScript capabilities and everything else and if you want to be sure that also your um toml or config toml whatever it is um work in the future you should write like 313 or you should provide a specific a specific version yeah. the thing here is that I provide. I, I tried every single project specific version. Not all of them, of course, but I tried the version at the time I uh, updated uh, this example, and I couldn't find any combination that will make this work. So oh. this is something because I don't know where Tornado comes from. So this is something that Micropip decides that Tornado should be included. I have no idea whatsoever from looking at the stack where this tornado comes from. Yeah. So I believe in Micropip, we should we should probably raise an issue if it's not there already about, hey, I understand you can't find a Python 3 wheel for tornado, but can you tell me which other thing was looking for it? Because here you can see it's just this. Yeah. And if I if I try to um, add tornado in here, like okay, I want tornado and I want it to be uh, six point two, right? Yeah. So I run this again, and what happens is that um, the error doesn't really tell me anything else that uh, I didn't know already. So now I have two issues: <laughs> tornado six point two and tornado greater or equal 6.2 but it doesn't tell me which one is asking for this yeah and so this this is something I, I want the community to be aware so whenever you decide to land and this this is also a very um peculiar let's say um example because this is not just what we what, what we load in in PyScript or python side this is about what we load on the page as well so we have panel in the CSS, 
and JavaScript things from the, so this is panel Minja yes from different versions also and this is something that we also should fix so we have different panel and different things and then we have maybe some other um well we have bootstrap we don't have many other dependencies but Boca also uh, as a version you know and so when we have 322 for Boca um probably this should be mentioned in here so three point 3.22 and just trying to explain the best way to avoid this kind of issue that yeah. we are having in the first place for our users because um this this, this isn't just us this is just python yeah. packaging in general yeah. <laughs> yeah so on us what we need to discuss and improve and uh, hood already mentioned that is that we should provide a way to freeze freeze the package and be able to reload for that particular project the same the, ex the exact same package and i think that's the next thing i'm gonna work on once the other little bugs are fixed um but right now i just want to be uh tell people again developers that if if you have dependencies on the page and you are running dependencies from a cdn and you have a specific version be sure that the version is reflected your package once all of those versions working in theory those should work again forever but right now this specific k panel thing i don't know where it's break where it's breaking and yeah. and, I, I, and i don't know what i should do to fix it and so if, if i can find myself in this difficult situation i think or some at least help the uh, micro peep um, could give us and so we can maybe mention okay something is um i i know the error i know the versioning but in this stack i don't know who's calling what and yeah. uh, and this is a bit annoying yeah um so be aware best thing to ship a, a product that works uh no matter the time no matter when it's to pin pin your dependencies we will provide a better way to ensure that your dependencies are pinned. Uh, we can do that in passkip.com if we if you ship without pinning dependencies in your um, in your config elsewhere. Um, then it's more complicated because we don't we don't know at that point in time with that with that pilot uh, version what's the default version for all of these dependencies so yeah. if pio died in in the meantime updated and the default version for bokeh is something else than 3.22 get to control that so yeah that's yeah. that's again a reminder that hopefully will help shipping um more robust applications that won't break in the future if if the the, the version upstream changes yeah. as a default yeah. um and that's okay. it no, don't, uh, okay so the next one is uh yeah, th th this is an odd issue and i guess yeah. you need to still keep sharing your screen to show us what what's yeah. so odd about yeah, yeah. issue 2155 yeah so this is i mean the, the 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 user did a great job there is an issue there is a what happened there are expectations there is a reproducible thing which unfortunately i cannot reproduce because if i if i try whatever the user did you see that counter is incrementing yeah Sorry? oh hi martin hey, um, folks. so this is probably something we should think about in terms of documentation or maybe even things but i don't know this just works somehow um so we have a pyclic sub submit and the public pyclic submit comes from uh a a Python module, but the Python module is, um, I don't know if it should work with the Py editor or not. So there is this demo that uh, is saying, okay, I have an editor, I have a, a submit, and uh, and it should process this editor code. Yeah. So the editor code has, um, uh, well, it works. Editor inevitably works in a worker because if you type some while loop that never ends, you, you don't want to get your entire page stuck. So that's the thing. So here we are messing up, not messing up. It's, it's just we are, we are combining the editor and futures. Like um, I want when 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 the editor runs, I want to 
uh, do something or I want to inject the editor or change the editor. And this is all stuff that probably um, other people already are already using. And so one thing that I'm not sure how much we should uh, explain to users is that a synchronous listener, if they have any await in it, they cannot after that ever even dot prevent default for instance, or even stop propagation because the event, by the time any asynchronous thing in an event is happening, yeah, it's gone. It's been rescheduled. And yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And the same happens with, uh, especially the same happens with the workers. So I'm thinking, how much should we improve documentation about this? Because if we add listeners from workers, we have a specific, our own way to eventually say these events should and default on the main thread but within the worker there's no way this can work but also on the main thread there's no way this can work and so this was like okay i'm, I'm not sure what we are doing here but it should be clear to anyone and in this case there's not even a prevent default or anything so i'm just saying up up to here this event can be prevented yeah or this line there's no way you can prevent default there's no way you can do anything else with the event and even the current target might be lost um the target maybe not but the event is just a synchronous unfortunately the events were born synchronous and so in an asynchronous event uh, we should probably document more the fact that how the event behave and the fact that the event not stop propagation after an, an, an await thing because it, the event will be already propagated at the time. So after this, so the non-blocking nature of sync is literally non-blocking, but the event nature is blocking and sync. Um, and yeah, so, so, and then so, we have... So the, j yeah, just, just, so, just so I understand what's going on here, um, it's not so much a technical problem as we need to manage the expectations of folks so that they understand yes. that given yes. this sort of thing, you're going to see this sort of behavior because that's just so, the way the universe works in browsers. For me, there are a few things. Yeah. The pie click when the editor is around or any worker is around is extremely confusing. Yeah. I wish we would deprecate the pie or M pie click sooner than later and, and promote when the creator yeah. more when, when, when that's the case. Because here there's no reason to to have a pie click submit instead of in this file, the yeah. MRE.py to have a document get element by the the button the submit button and then use the I, when the creator i'm with you with that oh, and i oh, think the rest yeah. of the internet is as well because the on click you know javascript yeah. the way of doing it is you know is frowned upon even though it was what was uh you know back in 1997 when these things came out yeah um, yeah so it was the way it, it, it also the... we should delete yeah, it exactly. yolo it just get, get no, not, it. not necessarily deleted there are people loving it but <laughs> it's the, it, it comes from time where people were just yeah. not having workers and working on the main thread. And uh, and yeah. I think this is confusing. So to remove confusion, I want this to be deprecated, not gone, but at least deprecated for for, 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 for a while. Mm. And I want to be sure that anytime we have an asynchronous event from Python, um, we eventually, if if I don't know how, but we should warn people more that the event, the asynchronous events or worker events, which are inevitably asynchronous because they happen on the main thread, asynchronously, um, they should they should they should be aware that if that happens, they need to be aware that stop propagation, prevent default, stop immediate propagation, all the synchronous things, including current target, might be lost by the time they need it. So that that's another thing. Yeah, awesome. that we went through. Does that event in that in that case? Sorry, scroll. So, does does the user have to declare that as an asynchronous event handler here, or, or they are they have they just declared it as that so that they could use the await? And what would happen if they didn't declare it as asynchronous and didn't bother to await? Just basically, in JavaScript, would script dot process without an await be something kind of like the old? I think it was in JavaScript or Window. I can't remember. Like the invoke yeah. later kind of thing like it, it'll invoke it just some point in the future on the event loop so yes and no so if you want to be sure something yeah. asynchronous happens you need to await for it and so yeah. the await here is kind of mandatory 
we have a different behavior between MicroPython and Pyodite. And that's also on, in our uh, WAN implementation. Pyodite, you need to be sure that if the um, script process is asynchronous, wait for it. MicroPython, you don't need to do that. Right. Um, I don't want to go into that details because we dis uh, we discussed that in a merge request and also Nicholas was like, oh, funny enough, this stuff is not needed at all in MicroPython, but it's needed in Pyodat. And I don't want to say which is right and which is wrong because in I, I expect, so in the JavaScript world, if you, anything asynchronous, if you invoke it, it's going to happen. You don't have to explicitly await it, but if you await it, the next line is going to happen after that. If you don't right. await it, it's going to happen anyway in time. But here we have uh, even more details about who is running this. Because if it's Pyodide and you just invoke this, and this is a core routine, which is a, a, an asynchronous callback. Uh, I'm not explaining to you. As I'm just saying if this is something that is not awaited, is is um, is not going to finish, and Pyodide is, will complain that nobody awaited for that result. And so right. the result is lost. So that that's probably between logic the explicit intent and the fact that there's still garbage collector handling uh between waiting something or not caring about it so if you don't care about this uh why should this execute but this is just philosophical and um, not productive for this discussion but definitely all these topics should be somehow summarized i don't know if um the faq session of of our uh, documentation would be a good place, but probably yes, because we, we are not describing enough the, the the asynchronous nature of events and we're not describing these differences. And I think these are all kind of uh, hard, <laughs> learning hard while while you're developing more complex stuff. Uh, you're learning the hard way that, that that stuff requires to be awaited, the events asynchronous uh, listeners cannot be uh, stopped or, and all these kind of things. So yeah, this is rather. Uh, I'm not complaining about this user. It, everything is fine. I still need to to find out what is it that is not working because to me everything is working right now. So, but that's also after a new release and a new Chromium browser and everything else. So, this is about. We should pay more attention to these details, maybe. Oh, I'm proposing should we actually update the docs, explaining quite a lot about this stuff. Is anyone going to read it? And and that 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 will be my item for today. And that, that's it for me. So that's always the danger with docs, though. Is anybody going to read them? And that's why famously on IRC, uh, you know, grumpy old programmers would just reply RTFM. Uh, which isn't right. a particularly nice thing to do, but are often oh. <laughs> they're the person who wrote the effing manual, and that's why they keep, t you know, I covered this six months ago, just go read the docs, you know, let me Google that for you, is another kind of sarcastic response that <laughs> people get. In fact, I think there's even a website called Let Me Google That For You, and it, it, it's a bit sarcastic in the way that it, it presents the results. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we can't, uh, you know, we I think we should definitely document it, and uh, people on Discord uh, will eventually, you know, it, it's part of the learning curve. You know, you're a beginner coder. Uh, you just blunderbuss questions out. Um, and then after a while, you become more refined in the way that you ask questions. You understand there is documentation. You understand how to access the documentation, how to search it and things like that. So it, it it's a perennial kind of it's a feature of being a human being is that it's how people learn and you know um yeah and don't, don't get me wrong this is not a PyScript issue this yeah, is yeah. a web standard issue to uh, sort of issue because that's the different nature of events versus yeah. asynchronous and they are born in 20 years of different yeah. <laughs> things to consider and and uh, and constraints yeah. too so I think it, it, I, I would like to write a little bit about this, but probably not too much. But I think it should be it should be part of our documentation because it's a common it's a common thing that I see examples like I, I have this asynchronous event or I have this event from a worker, and the worker unfortunately is not explicit that it's asynchronous. It's inevitably asynchronous by the nature of the round trip that the worker needs to do, yeah. and so um, I, I think this 
should be more uh, more um, clear in our docs. Yeah. That's it. Totally. Okay, that's the end of the uh, agenda items. Um, oh man, Martin, you missed an epic call. Honestly, there were there were cats, there was music, uh, yeah. there were sharks <laughs> with lasers. Uh, mm. You know, it was it was amazing. Um, uh, well, anyway, you can go watch it again if you want to. But uh, one item that we did have, which I just want to highlight here, is uh, how do we recruit uh, more participants in this meeting? Ideas, please. Given that you know half the Pisic.com team are now on other meetings at this moment in time because you know yeah. things has changed and things like that, um, so yeah. we, we'd we'd love love feedback, um, uh, you know. But anyway, um, any any more for any more? Nope. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>